Hi everyone, this is Patrice Hotman, Executive Director of COCA. So glad to be here with you today. And now we're going to switch to a live Q&A um, session with our terrific long-term sponsor, uh, Dr. Glenn Bigsby in the Colorado Center for Gyne Oncology. Dr. Bigsby has been such an advocate for COCA and everything we do. And we're just thrilled that you could be here and add, um, uh, participate in this live Q&A. I'm happy to be here. Good morning, everybody. This has been a great program so far. Um, a lot of tear jerkers uh, to start off with, which is uh, just the beauty of what you do, showing the beauty of, of what's in a difficult disease. Well, listen, um, we, um, number one, everyone is free to chat in questions. I also had a group of questions that were submitted early by survivors in our community. And so I'm just going to go ahead and start with some uh, super topical stuff, things that have been giving people a lot of stress right now. And um, the first is just a couple questions on dealing with COVID as a survivor and being in treatment. And so qu one question is, I'm in treatment and how much of a risk does that put me at with COVID-19? Well, certainly you become, you know, part of the at-risk population uh, when you're under treatment uh, of cancer because your immune system uh, does change during that, not only from the, sometimes the medications, but just the cancer alone uh, and what the cancer can be doing to you as well. So it's really important that um, those patients at risk still uh, not be going through a lot of the new phases that are open up and going to restaurants and things, but really practicing the old phases that we were in with social distancing. You know, grocery stores have been great at opening their um, stores up early so those at risk patients can come where there's less people there. Um, really knowing the knowledge of your family and friends and, and those potential that, uh, people that could be exposed uh, into really not uh, have exposure with those people that have more exposure, including children and kids. Kids um, can pick up this virus and although they may not have symptoms, they can carry it to grandma or grandpa or, or anybody else. And so it's important to, at this point in time, not totally take yourself out of the world. We like you getting outside, getting some sun and things like that, but just practice precaution um, You know, at this point in time because this COVID is not over. We've seen some increases in different states uh, and things. And so it's just important to keep yourself safe. Uh, thanks. Okay, and then just one more connected to that, which is um, somebody asking, they're out of treatment, but is there um, any data on how much having been through treatment before affects your immune system once you're finished with treatment? You know, there's, there's not a ton of data out there as far as studies, because we're still studying a lot related to the COVID virus and things, but the chemotherapy that, uh, that you receive uh, or any of uh, some of the other medications that, that uh, aren't chemotherapy that we're utilizing for ovarian cancer these days uh, can uh, tax the immune system. It takes some time to, to really uh, get out of that. Some of these medications will give you a lack of sleep, so you're not sleeping well. It can uh, bring your immune system down, uh, you're not resting very well. Uh, so it's just, uh, it's very important um, uh, to just still be cautious when you've come out of treatment. Your body will get better over time, but a lot of times it takes time and it depends on how long you've been treated, how many treatments you've had in the past, uh, that certainly can still weigh on your uh, effect uh, of um, being exposed to a COVID virus. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, one of the big questions that we get in Nikki Circle a lot is, are questions on um, the new class of drugs, the PARP inhibitors. And so one question is, when should I be on a PARP inhibitor and um, why one PARP over another? When and why? Which one? Yeah, so uh, PARP inhibitors are a fantastic new addition to uh, our regimen of treatments for ovarian cancer. And they've really expanded quite quickly over the last several years including some new indications just in the last couple of months. And so really what we do is all these different PARP inhibitors, there's three in particular, uh, through the FDA have really different uh, approvals as to when and where they are utilized. And so we really uh, follow those FDA approvals uh, for those particular patients. So there's a very vast way to use PARP inhibitors in many different situations. 
And so it's really talking to your doctor and see which, when an, a PARP inhibitor is really uh, right for you. Can you tell us a little bit about um, Avastin and um, we know that's sometimes used in maintenance now, but is that something that's being widely described? How does it, uh, prescribed, how does it work? And, and again, when should someone be on it? So uh, Avastin, not to get into too technical um, as to how these drugs work, is it works on what's called vas vascular endothelial growth factor. And essentially what it does is, is it helps prevent tumors uh, getting what we call microvasculature or blood vessels that actually uh, allow those tumors to grow. So if we can prevent these tumors from getting, from getting more blood supply, we can essentially starve these tumors to a certain extent. And so Avastin has been uh, utilized for quite some time, uh, you know, for many, many, many years, well over what the PARP inhibitors have been used. There's even new studies uh, now where we're combining PARP inhibitors and other medications with Avastin, not just in the maintenance fashion, but in the treatment fashion. So again, something to talk to your doctor about uh, if you're a particular candidate uh, for either Avastin alone in a maintenance fashion or particularly combined with uh, another medication. Great. Um, I have a, um, a question from a survivor. Uh, she's on Neraparib and she said she's experiencing episodes of high heart rate, shortness of breath, um, extreme tinnitus. Um, is this normal or does it indicate a reduction is needed? Well, it, it, um, it's good to see your doctor and see if these are maybe related to something else and, and be evaluated for that. But some of those symptoms can be associated with uh, the PARP inhibitors. And so oftentimes we'll do what's called a dose interruption. And so if we stop the medication and the symptoms go away, uh, then uh, we absolutely know that it was likely due to the medication. Uh, if it does not go away, then we can uh, treat those particular problems. Now, if it does go away, sometimes we do dose reduce, sometimes we actually just restart the medication and see how they do. So just really patient dependent. 